I'm sure by now everybody's seen that picture of the uh, black hole, red uh, cloud-like structure around uh, center darkness. Uh, it's pretty impressive, it's actually quite amazing, but I suspect some people might have uh, confused the center darkness for the black hole. The black hole is in there, it's just that it's so small compared to the size of the uh, red cloud-like structure that if, if that black hole was bright like our sun, we would barely be able to see it. But it's, it is it is in there. But uh, instead of talking about the black hole, which is pretty impressive, and there's a uh, hundred or even much more videos out there that, that uh, would describe it a lot better than I could, what I want to talk about, what, I, what this video is going to be about, is what that proved. And what it proves is that Einstein was right. There's been multiple events that have proven Einstein over a hundred years ago when he came up with his, with his idea and I think it was proven, at least the first part, first time that it was proven was in uh, 1920. I'm not sure if I'm remembering the year correctly. What I do kind of remember is that it was right after World War I. So anyways, nevertheless, this video is going to be the, about Einstein, or at least my take of Einstein's ideas, which are pretty fantastic, in my opinion. talked a few times in previous videos a few of the aspects of Einstein's ideas these are not necessarily all of Einstein's ideas I don't think I have enough time to describe everything and I don't think I could by the way I'm, I'm not sure I understand it completely to be able to be like the uh, expert on Einstein's ideas but what I am going to describe are the uh, parts of his ideas that I help, have have helped me figure other things out, other related things. I want to say two years ago, but I may or may not be accurate. A local reporter came by to interview me, and I don't remember exactly how that the genesis of that was. I think I I had a conversation with one of my friends about physics, and so he thought it would be a good idea if his the TV station where he worked at would interview me. And so that's, so that's what they did. And I remember the lady, it was a lady reporter, the lady came by and she said right around there, they set up the camera over here somewhere behind me. And, um, and she asked me to describe Einstein's ideas and I told her, I don't think I can. It's too big, too much. But uh, what I did tell her uh, was pretty much this. I told her that the light from the sun takes about eight minutes to get here from our perspective. But from the perspective of light, uh, photons, light particles, uh, they actually get here instantaneously. And uh, the light the light from the furthest object we can see through our telescopes is around 13 billion light years away. And uh, the light from those objects, galaxies actually, takes 13 billion years to get here. But from the perspective of light, photons, it gets here instantaneously. In other words, photons do not experience time or at the very least do not experience time but like the way we do. And not only that, but they do not experience space. They traverse the enormity of space instantaneously from their perspective. And not only that, but since photons don't have mass, which is what enables them to travel at, at such speeds, only objects that don't have mass travel at the speed of light. Well, anyways, though, uh, since they don't have mass, then from the perspective of light, the same nothingness that supposedly uh, was before the Big Bang and still this universe the same universe that we experience with uh, time space matter or drama this universe perspective of photons is nothingness and uh, and I uh, I uh, remember hearing him say something to the effect of wow and not just the reporter but the camera guy too which which apparently it impressed him which is extremely impressive how uh, Einstein figured this out, I'll try to describe it in a little bit, but it was truly amazing. There was no Einstein before Einstein. I figured it out eventually because of Einstein, but there was nobody uh, describing it to Einstein. So it's pretty amazing what he was able to figure out. Okay, that's one aspect that that uh, that is pretty interesting. And here's another aspect. And, and again, it's pretty amazing, or at least in my opinion, it's pretty amazing. But uh, the way I describe this second aspect of the of how reality actually works, uh, according to Einstein, is that I will tell people to focus on the now, on the present, right? 
Okay, that now, that present is is now in the past. And so I tell them, just because that uh, what we um, were focused on a little while ago is in the past, does not mean that it faded to nothingness, does not mean it does not exist. And not only that, but when we were, when when that, now that's that's now in the past when that was the present this now the future now the 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 now that was in this and that moment's future was also also existed the point is that that according to Einstein and again he's been proven over and over again to be correct is that the enormity of time exists, and I know I'm going to use the wrong word, but there's no real words to describe what Einstein figured out. But the enormity of, of uh, time, from the Big Bang to whatever happens at the end, exists simultaneously, and again, I know that the word simultaneously is invoking time, so you can't use time to describe time, right? But anyways, though, hopefully it's making my point. The enormity of, of time, the same way that the enormity of space exists simultaneously, the enormity of time exists simultaneously. And I know that's the wrong word. Uh, your birth in the past still exists. Again, the word still is the wrong word, but hopefully it's making the point. Your death in the future exists just as much as your, your birth. Your entire life exists as one thing. We experience it moment by moment, but from a perspective outside of time, you would be able to see the whole thing as one thing. And that was huge. I think that still is huge. How, how was was this guy without anybody's... Well, actually, I was going to say without anybody's help, but he received a great deal of help. But uh, without an Einstein before him, how was he able to figure all this out? According to Einstein, the way he figured this out was that one day he was leaving the downtown area of Munich, Germany on a train and he could see the downtown clock, hopefully it's still there. And he imagined himself going at a significant fraction of the speed of light. He realized that at that speed, the hands of the clock would start to slow down. And if he was able to reach the speed of light, accelerate to the speed of light, the hands of that clock would actually stop. And from that, he uh, realized that the that the speed that you're able to travel at, if it's significant enough, affects time. It slows down time. And I was still a young kid when I read this, and I could understand why the clock would seem to slow down, and I could even understand why it would actually stop as you traveled at the speed of light. But I, but I couldn't make the connection. Would that really make, make time stop within the vehicle you're traveling at the speed of light? I just, I couldn't quite make the connection. It wasn't until years later, actually decades later, that I was working on a few different problems and I had seen a PBS documentary on time travel. And I don't remember if this question was in the uh, documentary or if the documentary simply inspired this question in my head. But the question was in my head of uh, what would constitute time travel how would you be able to prove to yourself that you time travel assuming that you actually time travel you jumped from let's say the 80s to the 90s how would you be able to tell that it was different times there would be different people there would be uh, maybe different buildings but how would you be able to prove to yourself that you travel that you jump time jump through time and asking somebody is this scientifically is not cutting it because they could easily lie to you right so that question was in my head while i was working on these other problems and at the time i was very much into the uh, jfk assassination i had been reading quite a few books about it and i had uh, watched the uh, films taken that day in the plaza of the assassination the uh, nicks film the Sapruto film the mary something film from different perspective from actually opposite perspective of the uh, assassination Sapruta being on the north side of Elm Street and um, Nick's being on the south side of Elm Street pointing north. So anyways though, so I had watched these films quite a few times, enough times where I could almost imagine myself 
in them watching the action watching the limousine going by and trying to figure this stuff out so this day i was uh imagining myself from the perspective of nix watching the limousine as it went by and i realized that a better perspective would be from the opposite side the opposite side of elm street on the picket fence that would have been a better perspective to see what actually happened and that's when it clicked that's when i finally figured out what einstein was talking about i realized that uh if you can witness the same event twice that would constitute time travel if you're able to see the same event from two different perspectives that would be proving that you time travel so i imagine sort of like a triangle the first point of the triangle being the event that you're trying to witness which in this case was the presidential limousine the second point of the triangle would be of your first perspective of the event and the third point of the triangle would be the perspective that you wish you had and i realized that if i was able to travel from the second point of the triangle to the third point of the triangle faster than the speed of light i would be able to witness the same event twice I, in other words i would be able to time travel imagine the photons leaving the limousine at the speed of light if i'm able to get from this point to this point faster than the speed of light i will be able to see the photons from this perspective and from that from the third point of the triangle's perspective i would be able to see the same event twice and that finally uh, did it for me i finally understood why the speed of light and time are so intertwined and that actually happened early in the day i remember it was still dark and I, all I did all day was just sit and, and think about the implications of this, the implications of how of time being intertwined with your speed, the speed of light, and what all that meant. Well, anyways, though, by the end of the day, not even the other day, by the afternoon, uh, maybe, I don't know, 12 hours later, I understood pretty much everything that Einstein was describing, and I also understood gravity. At the end of this video, I'll link the video, the, my video, that explains what I think is gravity. Most scientists would, would say that gravity dilates time. Gravity has the effect of dilating time. My idea is that uh, dilated time is gravity. Dilated time creates the effect that we call gravity. Also inertia, and uh, I explain it better in that video. Whoever is interested might check it out. But anyways, though, my point is that i finally figured it out because of einstein there was no einstein before einstein einstein had a great deal of help from multiple people i'm not going to be able to name them all including newton i've heard discussions on which one was the better scientist isaac newton or uh, albert einstein and i have to say that it's not much of a uh, competition what newton did was pretty amazing figuring out that there was such a thing as gravity, figuring out calculus, figuring out a whole bunch of things. But what Einstein did was nothing less than figuring out how reality itself functions. You could argue that without Newton, Einstein would have figured his stuff out. But uh, what, what Einstein figured out is truly, truly amazing. And, um, and the only reason I was able to figure it out eventually, it took me years, decades actually, was because of Einstein. So nevertheless though, that black hole that I started talking about at the beginning proves once again that Einstein's ideas, as amazing as they are, are true. What I described as the enormity of time existing simultaneously or that, uh, or that nothingness that existed before the Big Bang, from the perspective of light, this universe is still nothingness. All that has been proven to be true. It's not just words that I'm saying. It's not just ideas that uh, that I'm amazed with. It's actual, factual. It's it's factual that the universe is exactly like that. And that's not the end of it. There's still more to figure out. There's still a lot more that we need uh, to understand. But just that part is truly amazing. When I finally figured it out, it was very much like, like some people would describe religious experiences. It was truly, truly amazing. And uh, I guess that's it.